Good evening, comrades from the All India Bank Employees Association. We are very happy to meet all of you through this uh, Facebook live program today. As all of us know, today we were to go on an All India strike on the 19th. But yesterday, late evening, there was a meeting, high level meeting by the Chief Labor Commissioner, Ministry of Finance, IBA, all the concerned banks, etc. And an amicable understandings have been reached. And so last night we decided to defer the strike. So first of all, I would like to congratulate all of our employees, all of our members, all over the country and all the banks for their wonderful preparation for the strike. That is the main reason why the government intervened, why the IBA wanted to discuss and sort out the matter because the preparation was so effective and enthusiastic. Particularly, I would like to congratulate our young comrades. As usual, not only in the Twitter campaign, but in all the programs, they were in the forefront because uh, there are a lot of people who have not understood why we have given the call for strike and what we have achieved. There are many comments I will talk about that. But young employees particularly, they have understood the importance of jobs, job security, trade union rights, labor rights, the need for the union, collective bargaining, all these things. So that is why they were in the forefront. I'm very happy. I would like to congratulate all our people for that. First of all, why did we give the call? Because our uh, 11 bipartite settlement is over, we are given a call for, we are given the charter of demand for the 12 bipartite. IB is said to call us for discussion. Secondly, there are some issues. For example, the popular demand of the Friday banking. Then the retirees are all anxiously waiting about the pension updation. So, why IB is not fighting on these matters? Something else they have given. Similarly, the government is also getting ready in the winter session towards the bank privatization bill. Some people are asking, this strike should have been for this uh, government's attempt to privatize the banks. But something else uh, like that uh, people are commenting. So we should know why we have given a call for strike. Some people are telling, because there is a problem in some banks, why all of us should go on strike? In my bank, there is no problem. There is no confrontation by our management. Why should I go on strike? Why should I lose wages? Like that, uh, there have been questions in the mind of the people. So firstly, I'm very proud that after a very long time, All India Bank Employees Association, we gave a call for this uh, All India Solidarity Strike. The solidarity means the problems faced by the employees and members in some banks, the entire banking fraternity under the banner of the AIBA, we gave a call. This is the basis of the All India Bank Employees Associations, our growth, our achievements. Because in 1948, when one bank was in uh, agitation, like the Central Bank of India, our Pravatkar gave a call for uh, All India, I mean Bengal strike, and that issue was. Uh, uh, settle like that we, we, we find that uh, the basis of the AIBA is the solidarity and support. Injury to one is an injury to all. Problem of one is a problem of all. One for all, all for one. This is what our leaders Prabhatkar, Parvana, all of our great leaders have taught us. And this strike is essentially to express our concern if there is a problem for somebody the entire AIBA membership is there. This is number one. Secondly, uh, in every bank there will be problem. So long as management is there, they don't like unions, we know that. And so naturally they will create problems. They will not, uh, I mean, agree with our demands. So in some bank or the other, at some time, there will be some agitation. But can it be that in every agitation of every bank, that all of us can go on strike? This is also very important to understand. We found a fleet because in AIBA, one thing all of us know and we should know that the basis of the All India Bank Employees Association is our struggle for bilateralism, 
our struggle for jobs and job security. These are the two outstanding uh, achievements of the All India Bank employees. No doubt there have been other achievements, bipartite, wage revision, service condition, many things. But the bipartite system is so significant achievement of the All India Bank Employees Association that we paid a heavy price. For 20 years, bank employees were fighting, AAB was fighting, only on this, I want bipartite, I want bipartite. We have seen some uh, five, ten years ago, uh, some of the people, we don't want bipartite, we want pay commission. We had to carry on a campaign and then uh, now most of the people have understood that's not a big demand. Other people are thinking more than bipartite pay commission is better. But the ABU knew <coughs> for 20 years we fought from 46 to 66 and the first time in the entire country in any sector, in banking sector, AAB got the bipartite system. That means across the table, bilaterally, both the parties, management and the union, we discuss and resolve the problem. And this we have preserved from 1966 till now. And we have signed 11 bipartite settlement. But today in the recent period, we are seeing that there is a tendency of unilateralism on the part of some of the banks. They believe that I am not bound by bipartisan. I am did not go for bilateral discussion. I will decide and unilaterally I will implement. This is very dangerous, number one. Second, some of the bank management started violating the bipartite. They are party to the bipartite, but they feel that uh, if I want, I can, I am at free will to violate the bipartite settlement. This is another danger that we have seen in the recent period. Third, in addition to our bipartite, we are also having the protection of the Industrial Dispute Act and the Trade Union Act and such similar labor laws in our country, for which 100 years the working class, the trade unions, the workers have fought and we are having such protection. And under the Indian uh, um, Trade Union Act and the Industrial Dispute Act, there are some provisions. Uh, but now the managements are thinking, I am not bound. We are in a democratic country. The ID Act is an act of the parliament. The Trade Union Act is an act of the parliament. But if the bank's managements will not care for these labor laws, then where do we go? What can we do? So that is another one. Similarly, trade unions are democratic organizations elected by the people, for the people, to the people. So we elect our leaders. Some of the managements are telling, you might, have, you might have elected your people, but I don't want to talk to them because according to me, uh, he does not deserve uh, to be negotiated with. He is not in the service or some other reason. So that means the management will decide with whom they will talk. That day, I was asking the Indian Bank Association, if your management want the right to decide with whom he will talk, Give me the same right. I will decide who will be the management with whom I have to talk. Management team is decided by the management. Union team will be decided by the union. But still, uh, they are violating that. Similarly, we have under the Industrial Dispute Act and Trade Union Act protected workmen. Our active cadres, our leaders, our office bearers. There is a law that once we notify to the management that these are the leaders who are to be treated as protected workmen. And for the protected workmen, the management cannot take any action on them except with the permission of the labor authorities. Maybe regional labor commissioner, maybe uh, deputy labor commissioner, whatever it may be. On their own, they cannot take action. But here we are finding that even this is uh, being uh, diluted, even for protected workmen, they are directly taking action to victimize. And another one, in addition to bipartite, in addition to labor laws, we also find that we have uh, the courts, the local courts, the high courts, the Supreme Court. They give some verdict in favor of the employees, yeah, but some of the management say that I, I don't care. So if the bank will say, I don't care for bipartite, I don't care for labor laws, I don't care for Supreme Court, it's very dangerous. And particularly today, we are finding on two, three areas. Number one, that we have been fighting, all our members know, 
that the management want freedom to outsource all our permanent regular perennial job on contract basis because that is cheaper the government is trying many other people are trying so bankers also want the right to outsource whether it is really required or not because in a country we need to generate more jobs and not give the jobs on contract basis even then if there is any genuine need we can talk to the management and we can find a solution in 2010 we have agreed in technology oriented it related sector where we don't have the in house capability we can outsource the job but here normal simple job they want to outsource and it is part of the bipartite so violating bipartite that means this is an attack on jobs and job security they can come to the indian bank association talk to the aib talk to the united forum give us some concession that is understandable but if each bank will try to outsource the jobs then the job security uh, is at stake so this is very very important similarly in banking industry mobility is uh, Uh, there, somebody can be transferred. How they can be transferred? When they should be transferred? There are rules. For the past seventy years, transfer has been used as a weapon by the management. We know that, and that is why we have signed agreements to restrict the mischief of the management to harass the employees in the name of transfer. And the transfer is incidental to my job, but when it is misused, we have to restrict it. but now we are finding there is a bipartite settlement in 2010 if there is a surplus staff in a place and if there is a deficit uh, area where we need some people then subordinate employees cannot be transferred only clerical employee within the district with some uh, restrictions on uh, the kilometers they can be transferred that we have agreed but beyond that they cannot do that but we find some other bank they feel that they have right to transfer the people yesterday also i was talking to people because the management says that vigilance commission uh, cbo cbc so many thing they are quoting and uh, it, it the management argument is once in 3 years you have to be transferred because it is a uh, very sensitive post we understand that but i i i was laughing that yesterday only the government has uh, decided that the managing director of the banks can continue for 10 years now it is 5 year term now it can be extended to 10 years so whether this uh, managing director is the most sensitive post in the bank whether the md of the bank will be transferred from bank to bank once in 3 years he is going to be there for 10 years so if md can be there in the same seat for 10 years why not a clerk so these all defying logic that the management wants the thing is that they want to harass the people similarly trade union protection is available legitimate trade union activity is permitted legally but today we are finding our activists our leaders particularly young people they are thought to be victimized revengeful punishments highly disproportionate punishment vindictive punishment dismissal termination these are all slowly increasing in sonali bank in federal bank there is no need if there is indiscipline there is a way to tackle indiscipline there is a procedure but violating the procedure if they will do that then nobody will come forward to work in the union so this is a fundamental issue similarly we have seen the catholic syrian bank we all have enjoyed our 11 bipartite we are given the demand for the 12 bipartite but what about our brothers and sisters in catholic syrian bank it's a small bank the management is refusing to give them wage revision 13 times they have gone on strike the entire kerala all bank employees have gone on strike even then the management is not accepting so if aib cannot fight it then who will fight for them they are our own company they are our own brothers and sisters so that is also very very important similarly one more thing as i said in the beginning from tribunal we have come to bipartite but today because the management is moving unilaterally our unions are taking up the matter once you take up the matter it goes to the conciliation and in conciliation if it is not settled it will go to tribunal so this is another danger that is emerging that management will violate 
When you question, it goes to conciliation. In conciliation, they don't resolve the problem. So there is a danger of pushing these important service condition to tribunal. That means they want to reverse the clock back. So that is why on these fundamental issues, even though it is only concerning some 10, 11 banks, AIB decided from Central Committee that this is a very dangerous trend. If you don't fight at the industry level, the disease may come from one bank to another. We are not asking for bipartite. We are not asking any uh, economic demand. We simply say, respect that bipartite, respect that bilateralism, respect, that, respect our uh, labor laws. Don't victimize the people. This is not understood by some other people. No, no, what about my Friday banking? That is a different issue. That is pending with the IBA. Now some uh, hope is there that in principle, IBSS uh, will work out something. You give suggestion. We have given some, some suggestion. Officers have given some, some suggestion. In the next round of meeting, some consensus may come and the uh, issue may go forward. But this strike is not for that. Similarly, retired people, they are waiting for uh, their updation. That is very genuine. But that is a different process. That is a different issue on which we will fight if the IBA is not going to agree. But these issues are important. And so we have given a call for strike. And we prepared for it. But I am very happy that this time, normally IBA will not bother. But this time IBA invited. Chief Labor Commissioner invited and again IBA was asked to talk to us and yesterday fourth round of meeting and in that meeting very very important understandings have been reached because number one the Chief Labor Commissioner categorically told that all the labor laws have to be respected by the management. The Finance Ministry official was there. Deputy Secretary of the Department of Financial Services. He also categorically told that we are going to advise the banks. All banks have to bind themselves to the labor laws and the bipartite. So this is a very, very important advancement in our struggle against the unilateralism, against the violation of laws. So that is one thing. Secondly, we have seen that uh, <coughs> the management, as I said, either on these outsourcing or in transferring the employees. These are all pending at the IBA level. It's a management issue in the 11th bipartite. It is not at over. Just like we have residual issues, they are also wanting to discuss. But in between managements in each bank, they are trying to do something. So yesterday, the Chief Labor Commissioner in writing has clarified that these are all industry level matters. And the IBA and the unions have to sort out the matter. In the meantime, no bank can violate it. They should not proceed in the matter of outsourcing or on the transfer matter, etc. So this is another very, very significant development yesterday in the issue. Similarly, there are some issues which are pending in the regional labor commissioner level at different states on these matters. And there is a danger that the uh, conciliation may fail and matter may go to tribunal. Yesterday, again, in another significant uh, commitment, the Chief Labor Commissioner has told that all those conciliation proceedings will be kept on hold. It will not be closed, so there is no danger of going to the tribunal. So this is another very, very important thing that we have to understand. So Labor Ministry is involved. Finance Ministry is involved and they also want to sort out the matter. Similarly, there are banks. For example, uh, Sonali Bank. Many of us do not know because it is only two branches in the entire country. It's a Bangladesh bank located in Calcutta and Siliguri. There, our union leader has been victimized. What did they charge? They say, no, you have embezzled some four crores of money. If somebody will uh, cheat the bank for crore, four crores, the bank will keep quiet. So, this is a camouflage. But the fact is that he is exposing the corrupt activities of the management and is also exposing the management. So, they are angry. So, in violation of the Indian uh, our labor laws, in violation of the bipartisan settlement, 
So Moto, they say that we are terminating you because it is the order from Dhaka, from Bangladesh. And now is of the bank maybe in Bangladesh. But Indian uh, banking laws, Indian trade union act, Indian labor laws are applicable to Bangladesh bank or American bank or French bank or any bank, any foreign bank. They are bound by Indian law, but they are not carrying. So yesterday after this discussion, the Sonali Bank management has agreed and CLC also has directed that within 15 days, they will now start discussion with All India Bank Employees Association and our union. And they will try to solve the problem within the provisions of the Industrial Dispute Act and the bipartite settlement. For six months, our comrades in Bengal are fighting. But yesterday, this new development has taken place. So it's a very welcome thing. Similarly, we are finding in uh, Federal Bank, it's a militant union. A lot of young comrades are coming up uh, in the union activities. So the management is trying to target them one by one in different places. We have seen you now latest in uh, Mumbai, Maharashtra. Our young comrade is coming up. He's a central committee member of the AEBA for a small lapse, unintentional lapse. They are uh, trying to picturize as though he is a big fraud. He has committed a major fraud, major misconduct, so termination. But he's a protected workman. So yesterday, we are very happy that CLC has very categorically told the Federal Bank management that this boy, our comrade uh, Sumit, will be a protected workman. So once he's a protected workman, then naturally we can take up the matter that management cannot so motto terminate in the name of inquiry. They have to go to the labor uh, authorities that we can argue. So the gate has been opened to resolve that problem. That is one thing. Similarly, we are finding Catholic Syrian Bank, CSB Bank, I told you. They say we will not talk. Now they have agreed that let the union give that demand and we are ready to talk to them. So this is another good development. Similarly, we have uh, the threat to jobs and job security. For example, City Bank, some 300 comrades employees are working. And in that, about 200 employees, they are working in the consumer banking division. Now, management had decided that they want to close down the consumer banking division and sell it to Access Bank. Okay. But what will happen to the employees? For the past six months, our union is asking the management, please tell us what will happen to us. The management says, we only know we are going to sell the uh, consumer division to Access Bank. Remaining thing, I do not know. How it can be that you do not know, then what will happen to them? They are all uh, middle-aged uh, employees, our own comrades, our brothers and sisters in Citibank, totally committed to the All India Bank Employees Association. So now yesterday they were told, no, 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 we'll talk to our union and try to amicably resolve the matter so that it's a win-win situation. So for all these things, unless we had given the call, they would not have bothered. For example, the earlier Bank of Tokyo, and now it is called MUFG Bank, Japanese Bank. That just like that, some 10 employees out of uh, 20 employees, about 10 employees, they've been uh, fired, terminated. The management is not talking to them. They say, you give us alternative jobs. We are ready to work. The management, they have terminated them. In their place, they are taking some other contract employees. It's unfair labor practice. So all these things we have been able to take up. But yesterday, the MUFG bank management has committed. Let the union approach us. We will talk to them. So these, these, these are all the uh, uh, new things that has happened yesterday. And that is why we are hailing this uh, agitation. We are hailing the decision of the AABA to fight on these fundamental issues. And we are happy yesterday with the intervention of the government and the labor uh, commissioner, etc. Uh, it has been amicably resolved. And so from there, we can go. But there are criticism. Today, I am seeing in the social media. Some people are telling, no, no, where is pension option? Some people are taking, where is pension improvement? Somewhere people are asking, where is my uh, new pension to go? I want old pension. Some people are telling, Friday banking. Some people are criticizing. There are people, I know, uh, we are bankers, but there are some bankrupts. So some people say we are we bankers. 
some people they become uh, we bankrupts all these things are going on what they are telling what they are doing is not the point what aib is doing that is the right so because people know for the last 75 years aib is a caravan it has been marching 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 by fighting by sacrifice by struggle by unity by militancy we have been shining and going forward so naturally they are jealous and so they want to i mean create this uh, disaffection they want to create this enmity they want to do all types of negative politics but i am very sure that we have seen from 1946 there have been campaign against the all india bank empire association all have failed so uh, we need not be confused at all we should have total clarity on this matters on privatization very shortly united forum of bank union we are going to meet because the parliament is going to start very shortly and the government will move on that we will fight similarly already united forum has taken up on the friday banking and pension option etc we are demanding a discussion and once that discussions will come these issues will be taken up all issues are important but for some people job security is not important labor laws are not important collective bargaining is not important trade union representation right is not important bilateralism is not important so they may say this is nothing but we are very proud that aib has given the call and that is why entire united forum is supporting they are not fool they know the importance of the call given by the aib so let us ignore all these type of people who are barking they will continue to bark now, whatever we do they want to criticize that is their only job they have been uh, created only to criticize and then create all these things we should ignore them we are very happy that our young comrades particularly they have rallied round this uh, agitational call in a very big way everywhere very enthusiastically uh, they have been participated senior comrades have come ladies have come everything uh, is uh, wonderful and that is the result of that unity that iba government everybody has been compelled to repeatedly discuss with the all india bank empire association and this outcome could come and today we had a meeting of the all india iib office bearers unanimously office bearers have hailed our office bearers said it is a historic uh, development it is a significant development because we know the political scenario in our country the government does not want permanent jobs the government is not on job security the government is not on job creation because we know their policy the government wants to make labor law changes completely uh, in favor of the employers so in that scenario we have fought and retained our rights these trade union rights that are enjoyed by us are not our own they have been bequeathed to us by our great leaders our earlier generation of bank employees have sacrificed fought and they have given this bipartite they have given this trade union rights so it is our responsibility and duty to fight against all attacks on these rights on this fundamental i mean rights of the bank employees and our unions and we are happy we have done that that is why we are proud about the all india bank employee association we are proud about the enthusiastic cooperation involvement response of our membership to the struggle and we are very happy that it, the outcome is also very positive very inspiring very encouraging and this is an example where if you fight you can succeed this is why once again i am very happy to greet all our members all our unions all over the country that we should be remaining vigilant 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 there is no alternative if you are careless if you are complacent then they will attack our rights they will attack our jobs they will attack our uh, job security and today more than 6 lakhs of young comrades are working in the banks so actually we are very much uh, concerned that we have to protect them we have to protect the job and job security now in the indore central committee of the iba we have decided that the iba has to further take forward our demand 
for demanding the DA-linked old pension for the young people in different states. It is coming up. So, ABA we have decided. For the cooperative bank employees, we have to fight. For regional rural bank employees, we have to fight. For deposit collectors, we have to fight. For this uh, bank mitras, business correspondent, we have to fight. So, future is going to be full of attacks and full of struggles. And the need of the hour is to get inspired by the success of the struggle and to reiterate our commitment again and again that we shall remain united and we shall remain militant. We shall uphold the values of the All India Bank Employees Association. And 2023 is coming next month, is December. In January, we'll be coming to the new year. And 2023, we are going to have the All India Bank Employees Association Conference in Mumbai. Mumbai, the financial capital. And uh, they are uh, hosting the conference of the AIBA. And more than three, 4,000 our delegates, observers will be assembling where we shall discuss and decide not only the present challenges, but the emerging uh, confrontation approach of the government and the bankers and all inimical forces and how to take our AIB to greater heights in the days to come. So once again, we greet you, we congratulate you for your militant struggle that helped us to negotiate with the government and the bankers to halt the attack on our rights and also uh, consolidate our rights in the present difficult circumstances. So this is why today I wanted to meet all of you on behalf of the entire uh, office bearers of the AIBA, President Kamdar Rajan Nagar and myself, we once again greet you and thank you. Let us continue to be united. Let us continue to affirm our commitment to the ideology of the All India Bank Employees Association and success will be ours. Thank you very much.